Uh, so I'm going to be talking today about recreating a scene from Apple TV's For All Mankind and Free Flyer. So switching, let's just switch that logo over real quick. And there, that's much better. Uh, so before we get started, I do want to warn uh, anyone watching that there are going to be some significant spoilers ahead for For All Mankind, uh, especially season one, episode nine, but also a little bit of the kind of central premise. Um, I think it's going to be worth it anyway, but if you're you know, really concerned, uh, just come back in a few minutes. But let's get into it. Uh, for All Mankind is a TV show that's exclusively on Apple TV+. Plus, and it is an alternate reality where instead of... Uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin being the first humans to land on the moon on Apollo 11, it is the Soviet Union uh, led by Alexei Leonov. Um, and that kind of sets off this whole new chain of events where, you know, similar to how, uh, you know, the American reaction to Yuri Gagarin becoming the first human in space was to sort of double down on the space program and literally reach for the moon. Uh, you know, we again kind of double down and the uh, space race kind of escalates again. Uh, and, you know, you could imagine, it's basically imagine if Apollo never stopped and if they continue to amp it up from where they already were. Uh, one thing I really like about it is there's a lot of kind of cool things if you're into uh, spaceflight history, like for instance, fixing Alexei Leonov as the first human to set foot in the moon is a pretty good, uh, good choice. You know, he was the first person to do a spacewalk back um, in the Voskhod miss missions. Uh, he was the commander of the Apollo Soyuz test project. So, you know, clearly whoever was putting these scripts together had some idea of, uh, you know, some spaceflight history. Um, it's not the only event that changes. This is the somewhat rougher than actual uh, landing of Apollo 11, uh, but, you know, it just kind of takes it from there. And so you kind of start at roughly everything is kind of same to real history up through the early Apollo and then uh, deviates from there. Uh, we're going to be skipping forward to 1974, where Apollo 24 has just lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center and is currently waiting in a low Earth orbit parking orbit, preparing to do the translunar injection burn. Uh, for story reasons, this was a really important uh, mission to get over to the new uh, base on the South Pole of the Moon. And so also for story reasons, the TLI burn did not work. Uh, so they were stranded in low Earth orbit. Uh, could have gotten back to Earth just by aborting the mission, but you know they had this important task to finish up, and they wanted to be able to get to the moon. So the problem turned out to be a flight computer located in the instrument ring of the Saturn V. Um, we're going to take a closer look at that instrument ring, but it's basically a big pile of electronics and some early computers and various, like you know. Um, uh, support equipment that were essentially the brains of the Saturn V. Uh, this is a screenshot from the show where uh, astronaut Molly Cobb is explaining what the plan is, where they're going to scramble Apollo 25 up there to rendezvous with Apollo 24, go through the access panel, and swap out this uh, guidance computer. Um, I want to give some kudos to the show. They like so accurately replicated the kind of Apollo graphic look that I found myself trying to find this graphic before noticing the little uh, astronaut with the flight computer over here and realizing, oh, no, this is not, in fact, actual documentation of the instrument ring. Uh, just real quick to kind of show the complexity of the instrument ring, this next shot is if you were to unwrap it into one long line, you could see all the wiring and uh, support equipment and umbilicals and all the stuff that goes into running the Saturn V. And the thing we care about is right there. That is the flight computer. And it's what we're going to be swapping out. Great. So here we are. Uh, we have already rendezvoused with Apollo 25, which is the larger vehicle because it still has the third stage, the S4B. Uh, we've got some astronauts enjoying their time out in space as they swap out this computer. Everything is going great and looking really picturesque while doing so. Uh, so you know, of course, this is where something has to go wrong because it's TV. So we're going to switch over now uh, to a scene from the show. So I'm going to start that right now. You're going to see a pop-up uh, show up with this video. It's about a minute, a little bit over a minute long. Go. Houston 24, you will go for FCC power up and self test. Pushing in the breaker now. Disky's back online. Wait a minute. Tank pressures are rising, and I'm, I'm showing turbo pumps start up. Get him away from that booster, it's still armed. Oh, shit. 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 O
Cynthia! Damn it, Tracy, don't overcorrect! I'm trying to regain control, but we're still tethered to 24. Come closer, I'll untether you. Molly, you do that and we'll cut your own safety line. Who gives a damn? Save the ship. <sighs> Bring my screen back up. Uh, should be the screen. All right. My screen should be back up now, I believe. Uh, but all right. So when I first saw that scene, I literally gasped and like lunged for the pause button, like at the first couple seconds into it, gonna try to kind of recover from what I, the craziness I just seen, and then proceeded to kind of step through it a few seconds at a time uh just kind of in shock so i immediately went back and watched it a few times um before we get into what uh i did next let's look at what the show does next so uh astronaut molly cobb has become separated after hanging on to the apollo 24 booster which started up early due to computer computer glitch uh in the show she mentioned she only has about 30 minutes of oxygen remaining and so that's how much time apollo 25 has to try to go rescue her uh, you know, they set up a series of maneuvers, uh, actually pretty accurately using the little uh, uh, indicators built into the windows here. Uh, you could see this is the, that little glimpse, a uh, little blinking light over here was the tumbling astronaut. Uh, and after a few tense moments, they actually managed to go and recover her, which got me wondering. You know, I wondered how much Delta V would somebody get while hanging on to a burning S4B booster. I wondered how possible it would be to rendezvous with them and save them. Um, so I got to work. Uh, first thing I did was bust out a book called Apollo by the Numbers, which I was already familiar with from working on my Spaceflight History podcast. It is a great reference that's just a bunch of raw numbers for what happened in the Apollo program. This is kind of an example page showing a whole bunch of stuff related to Apollo 17. Uh, all the units had to be converted because it's all in nautical miles and feet per second, but you know it gets the job done. Um, so I opened up this book, I fired up Free Flyer, and I started trying to model the scene we had just uh, watched. So at a high level scale, uh, this is broken down into five parts. Uh, there's the configuration, which is just kind of inputting all of the, the masses, the tank sizes, the time between events, the thrust of the vehicle, etc. cetera. Um, there's building the model, which is essentially applying that configuration, you know, building spacecraft objects in free flyer, attaching thrusters to them, making sure everything is using the correct force models and everything is timed up, uh, t synced up properly. Um, there's a th third section we're not going to be going uh, really into here, which is a three model setup, uh, which was helped to build this visualization. A uh, quick view setup, which is defining the 3D view and setting up stuff like what uh, colors the spacecraft are going to be, um, where they're going to be in relation to each other. And then the fun part is the scenario execution. This is where we actually do a series of maneuvers and propagate and get to find out what would actually happen here and see if we can recreate what happened in the show. Um, so let's take a quick look at the code, and then we'll actually run through it. So this is the free flyer uh, UI. This is uh, my mission plan. Uh, I've opened up all five free forms here and they each correspond to one of those high level blue boxes we just talked about. Uh, in the configuration, uh, you could see, for instance, a whole lot of uh, mass numbers here. Uh, for Apollo 24, since it was headed to the moon, I modeled all of its numbers after the actual uh, masses and you know statistics from Apollo 17, which was the latest and heaviest Apollo mission to actually fly uh, for Apollo 25, since it wasn't going to the moon, it was just LEO only, I modeled it after Apollo 7, which uh, you know was able to carry a lot less propellant in the service module since it wasn't going all the way to do lunar orbit insertion at the moon. Uh, but so basing all this on real historical data, getting the masses, getting the thrust of the J2 engine, uh, how much propellant there is. And then also the cr a critical part here was the timing. So I looked up, you know, found out the frames per second of the TV show and actually went through and with a little clicker, clicked the number of frames between the burn starting and when the CSM is separated and then how many additional frames until Molly Cobb lets go. Uh, that lets us figure out exactly how to like, you know, how long to apply the thrust from the J2 engine when we get to the maneuver execution part here. Um, and then also, since I initially set this up to be real time, but it turns out that was a little too sluggish, uh, we're going to speed it up a little bit down here. Uh, for the actual setting up the uh, building the model, 
we just, you know, using some free flyer native objects here, uh, we're modeling Apollo 25 as a spacecraft with the same mass as Apollo 7. Uh, we're modeling uh, the astronaut Molly Cobb as just a spacecraft because that way uh, we can use the built-in propagators and force models to see where she would end up after hanging onto the rocket. And then Apollo 24 is a little more complicated because it actually has to do the, the thrust event. Um, so we're going to build up the dry mass by taking the dry mass for the booster, and then everything on top of it, we're going to count as dry mass since it won't be depleted as propellant. You know, the command module, lunar module, service module. Um, we pick an epic, which I found out the right date from the TV show, and then just kind of pick the day of the year that allowed us to uh, you know, get, make this look nice. Uh, this is a typical Apollo parking orbit, you know, relatively low Earth orbit, uh, straight out of the Kennedy Space Center. Um, we add our thruster to Apollo 24. This whole big section here is where uh, we're setting up the tanks to make sure we've got our hydrogen and oxygen and everything is set up as the real Apollo vehicle was. Um, and then finally, we set up some burns down here. So rather than attempt to model one long burn with things falling off of it, I broke it down into three separate burns so that I can kind of change the state of the vehicle in between. We have our initial burn uh, from like, when it first ignites to when the command module separates. We have a shorter one that's going to be uh, between when the command module separates and when Cobb separate, uh, herself falls off. And then Apollo 24 continues on with its TLI, not just the rest of the TLI burn. Um, Again, I really want to thank Connor for get, providing me with these models. They are super uh, helpful and much appreciated, but I'm not going to go through all of the uh, detail that he provided here on how to build it. Uh, but he went through and built the vehicles out of kind of like basic shapes here using some Free Flyer 7.7 features. Um, for the view, uh, we set up some visual offsets to try to replicate the view uh, in the show itself so that, you know, for instance, Apollo 25 is a few meters off to the side of Apollo 24, so stuff like that. Uh, I built a little plume for the uh, for the thruster uh, once it ignites, and then all this is just setting up 3D windows and attaching things to it and making sure that everything's going to look uh, nice. When we get to the actual accident scene, this is the uh, scenario execution, and this is the fun part. So this is where you know, basically the overall loop is uh, step a little while, kind of move forward in time, do something, and then continue moving forward in time. Uh, so when we first start out. Uh, we are just propagating along, everything's great, no, no problems, and we're modeling Apollo 25 and astronaut Cobb as being just attached to Apollo 24. We're doing that by uh, setting the relative state so that it's basically a couple of meters away from the actual state. This way they won't be right on top of each other. Um, we go through and essentially, you know, we start the burn, we drop off the dry mass of Apollo 25 once it's untethered, which of course will change how much you know delta, how much uh, acceleration we're getting as we continue to burn. Um, we then model the astronaut falling off, and you know essentially we go through the entire thing bit by bit, taking each bit uh, part from that scenario and turning it into code and executing it. Um, so I think that's one approach, but let's get to the fun part and actually show what's going on here. So we're going to go back to this shot, uh, the establishing shot on the show, and see if we can get something similar. So there you go. Roughly the same area, but turns out they had a little bit of uh, camera trickery. So we're going to have to zoom in just a little bit to get to our spacecraft. So we've got Apollo 24 here. We've got Apollo 25 next to it. And we've got astronaut Molly Cobb hanging onto the side of it. Um, First, we're going to go ahead and just run for a little bit. No problem. Uh, again, this is a little bit faster than real time, but we're coming up on the accidental burn. Uh, just to, again, refresh your memory, we're going to show a screenshot, show that this is this part of the, uh, the scene. So the main engine ignites, uh, vehicle slides on, uh, slams into it. So we go ahead and model that here. We are now burning. Uh, Apollo 25 is being dragged along. Uh, it's going to be about 37 seconds that it's actually dragged along, which um, I suspect the Apollo uh, attitude control system would not be able to uh, cope with that. But after 34 seconds, we're going to switch the camera angle to model this part from the show. So here's the scene where the CSM actually separates. And here we are in free flyer. We're going to allow that to separate. And after just a few more seconds, Molly Cobb falls off uh, herself and we have now got a serious, serious problem. 
So over here on the left is a plot of essentially where Apollo 25 is, according to Molly Cobb. She is the center. She's the origin. Um, this is the left and right is um, rather the x-axis is the in-track distance, and the up and down is the radial distance. So how far away everything is. So uh, you can kind of see from this view that uh, the uh, yellow vehicle here, that's Apollo 25. The green is Molly Cobb. And you can see how from her point of view, uh, Apollo 25 has gone backwards and down. Um, so in the show, we know that they go and rescue her in only 30 minutes. And basically, that's not going to happen. She has picked up 28 meters a second at Delta V by hanging on for just four extra seconds. And I think realistically, if there really was only 30 minutes of oxygen left, there would be trouble. But there's something worth noting here. Um, on the real Apollo missions, if they ever, when they did an EVA in uh, low Earth orbit, which is pretty rare, uh, they didn't actually wear the big backpack here, the Portable Life Support System, or PLIS, um, which is important for our scenario here, because on top of PLIS, uh, by the way, this is a screenshot for, uh, this is a photo from Skylab, uh, where they're somewhat hilariously just using a long pole to hand up some film in a box. Um, but he's got no, uh, no backpack on here because everything he needs uh, for resources is coming through the tether here. But in the show, there is definitely the PLIS and more importantly, the oxygen purge system. This little part on top is basically an emergency oxygen system. So the whole thing should have had around eight hours of oxygen for the PLIS and a bonus two hours for the o uh, OPS. So we're going to assume that only about four hours has passed uh, you know, that's a good amount of time to get over there and swap things out. And we're going to say she's got six hours of oxygen left. Let's find out if we can save Molly Cobb. So heading back over here, we're going to uh, start running here. So this is, I gave the ground a whole five minutes to figure out a plan saying, oh God, bad things have happened. Please figure out what to do. Uh, so as we are uh, propagating here, things are getting worse and worse. The magenta line is Apollo 24 heading off to the moon at increasing to uh, 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 continuing to speed up. Uh, Molly Cobb is continuing to move forward, or for her point of view, Apollo 25 is moving down. Uh, and after about five minutes here, the ground is going to get its first set of maneuvers up to us, uh, which should be any second now. But you can really kind of appreciate just how quickly, um, you know that 28 meters a second of Delta V adds up. You know, if she's already six kilometers uh, away, a long track, uh, two kilometers above. So it's really uh, becoming, you know, to the point where they would almost just be a distant point of light, actually just kind of like the show uh, depicted. But after a few minutes here, we're gonna get our first burn and we're gonna execute it. Um, and you'll see that represented here in this plot as a sudden kink in the uh, graph here, because we're just going to model that as an instantaneous change. So with that first burn underway, since we gave the ground a few hours to uh, figure out what's going on, they took those few hours. So we're going to fast forward much faster now for until the second burn, which is a few hours down the road. So we're going to kind of zoom out and watch them go around the planet real quick. You can see how uh, the astronaut ends up 60 kilometers away at one point, but kind of for kind of cruising back in here. Um, Apollo 24 is still well on its way to the moon. It doesn't really care about any of this anymore. Uh, but we have, no, have kind of arrested the immediate crisis and are now like just need to kind of uh, bring these two orbits together. So they get kind of close again, they back off again. And at the end of this next rev here, we're going to do our second rescue burn. Uh, so we still got a couple hours of oxygen left. Don't worry, just everyone stay calm. Uh, and then once it pauses here, so now at this point we are eight kilometers above and about five kilometers ahead. We do a second burn here, bring it on in. Uh, it's actually targeting this in real time. Uh, so we just targeted ourselves a maneuver. We're now going to bring this in closer and closer. You can see on the left here that another little uh, you know, adjustment to the trajectory as we kind of drop this down. Um, and over here on the uh, 3D visualization, we will quickly see uh, Molly Cobb become more visible and appear to go flying by. Because again, this is a little bit faster than real time, just uh, so we can move things along. And now only about 3,500 meters away, coming up about two miles. And when we finally get to the actual vicinity, we'll do one last quick burn pair to kind of just bring her right into view. So at this point, we'll switch over to just the 3D visualization. She's no longer just a distant point of light, cruising on up, cruising on up. 
And now we're practically right on top of each other. So let's do one last targeting, perform this final approach here as another two burns. And so we're going to back up and essentially slow ourselves down to allow uh, Molly Cobb here to catch up. Um, let's see this from her point of view. You can still see where Apollo 24 went whizzing by, uh, but with just under an hour to spare, using just the uh, RCS thrusters now, we're going to cruise on in here and pick her up and basically look like we could successfully recreate uh, what the show managed to do. Took a little bit more time, uh, but the real problem is going to be, as we see, the required delta V is pretty high. Um, but you know, this, with the uh, mission already kind of blown, I think they would go ahead and dip into the uh, propellant for the main engine here. Uh, this part is a little bit sluggish, but she'll be coming along here any second. I essentially managed to successfully do this uh, quick uh, rendezvous and rescue Molly Cobb. So it turns out we can actually model a happy conclusion just like in the show. Uh, so I will let this last little bit play out. And if anyone's got questions, you can start dropping them in. Uh, and then once the final burn ends, just like on the show, right in front of the window, we're good to go. 47 meters a second delta V, no big deal. Um, but yeah, so that's it. If you like hearing me ramble about old space stuff, you might enjoy my Spaceflight History podcast. I've been covering every NASA human spaceflight mission in chronological order from Freedom 7 all the way up to STS-135. I just covered STS-79, which was a flight to the Russian space station Mir to go bring Shannon Lucid home and drop off John Blaha for a long duration stay. So it's got all of Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and uh, more than half the shuttle now. So uh, that's that. All right, thanks so much, JP. That was that was really cool. Um, we have a time for a quick question. Okay. Um, did you use any of FreeFlyer's optimization or targeting capabilities to calculate the recovery maneuvers, or how did you do that? Yeah, so I didn't use the optimization, but I can show that I used um, targeting. So I can show this last targeting is a little bit of uh, a crude approach here, but I figured um, it would be in emergency mode and wouldn't have custom software written for it. But for the final little um, cleanup burn here. I just picked, you know, I set up these two burns. We're going to vary essentially which direction and how big each of these burns should be. We're going to give them 10 minutes between it, and it's going to achieve getting to place uh, the astronauts just ahead of the spacecraft at, you know, 10 centimeters a second and call that a victory. So all, all those rendezvous burns were done with the uh, with targeting, live targeting. Some of it was done with kind of like earlier analysis to, to kind of get things started, but we uh, uh, four burns were targeted live during that presentation. 